Hello, welcome back to the, the debate with me, Laura Woods, Steve Sidwell and Ryan Mason. And we are now focusing our attentions on the transfer window because it shuts at 11pm on January the 31st and there's been quite a lot of action in it so far. And we're going to round up some of the latest news in it, starting with Arsenal. So Arsenal, we know... Uh, at the moment are in a process of, of transition with these transfers. Yep. They are only allowing loans, that's what we understand at the moment. Mm. And one man at the top of this list is Denis Suarez, so a midfielder from Barcelona. Is that what Arsenal need at the moment? Uh, well, I mean, what's going on with Arsenal first and foremost in that transfer policy is just outrageous. Mm. You know, they've, you know, they've gone to this stadium to, to generate money and compete with obviously the top teams in this league. Um, and to, to go into this window now as, as only getting loans is just I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, in terms of the player, uh, you've obviously got to look at, obviously, with Aaron, Aaron Ramsey that's going to be leaving, they're going to need to someone to possibly to get in on, on, on... To be fair, it might fit and tick all boxes because if they can get someone on loan, it's obviously then it's a trial period to see if the, the, the player adapts to the club, mm. if the club feels like it wants the player then to extend it into, into next season. But... The way Aaron Ramsey's uh, gone about his business this, this year, on and off the pitch, I mean, he's held himself in such high esteem, but they're going to obviously definitely need to sign someone that's going to fill that gap. How big a miss will Aaron Ramsey be for that squad? Massive. Massive, really, really big. I mean, I, I watched the game against Chelsea at the weekend and he was outstanding. I mean, I, I know the front two were, were very good in their movement and running in behind, but the dimension that Aaron Ramsey brings in terms of his forward runs is he's arriving in the box, the goals, the assists, he's, he's going to be a huge miss for Arsenal and that's bad business from the football club to, to allow Aaron Ramsey to run his contract down. This, you, just, you just can't explain it in this day and age. I mean, it's, it's not possible for Arsenal to do that and lose a, lose a player of that calibre to... I mean, he's going to Juventus, it looks like. It just goes to show what a, what a great talent he is. And I agree with Steve, the, the professionalism that he's shown. I mean, he knows that he's been leaving, yet the game of that weekend, he, he, he was running around, he was, he was putting his body on line for that football club. And you have to give full credit to him because a lot of players would, I wouldn't say down tall, but they, wouldn't, they, would, they would look after themselves and take care of their body. But him, he's, he's been absolutely outstanding for them. So he's, he's going to be a huge miss. There's another link here, Sampdoria goalkeeper Emil Adero. Uh, he looks like he's coming in to replace Petr Cech at the end of the season, because we know Petr Cech is obviously retiring at the end yeah. of the season. Is now the right time to be, to be looking at that? And also, what kind of role will he play, considering that they've signed Bernd Leno, and Leno is the starting keeper now? Yeah, well, obviously, again, you know, you've got someone like Petr Cech who's been fortunate enough to share a dressing room with him, and he's uh, a massive personality in that dressing room and, and around a training ground. And that's not just the way in that he's loud or, or, the, or the way he conducts himself. It's just that he's got that presence. And whenever he speaks, it's one of them calm, calm influences and everyone takes notice of what he says. So they're going to need to obviously bring a face in or, and bring a body in uh, and a personality that's going to replace him, which, which will be difficult. Um, and then it'll be out of the two to, to fight for the number one jersey. Leno, I've been impressed with him in terms of the, the majority of games that I've seen. Um, I, I, mem I remember him coming on against the Watford uh, game at the Emirates and he was outstanding. And he came on halfway through him when actually Petter got injured. Uh, and he came in, he commanded the box, come out and punch crosses. Uh, his positional play was very good. So they, it's a position that they're going to want to have competition for um, that will only be good for the team. All right, let's move on to Crystal Palace because this one's quite interesting. Wilfred Zaha linked with Borussia Dortmund. Apparently, they're interested in signing him at the end of the season as a replacement for Christian Pulisic, who's obviously going to Chelsea for 60 million at the end of the season as well. Um, that kind of, of name to leave Crystal Palace, Wilfred Zaha is, is their talisman. Do you think that that, is a, that would be an oversight if Crystal Palace were to let go of him? Oh, it'd be a big blow. Big, big blow. But to be fair to, to Wilfred Zaha, I think he's earned a move. Mm. The last, let's say, last 18 months to, to two years, he's, he's been a player that, if he did get a move to a big club, Champions League football, then you have to say fair play and good luck to him because he, he's been outstanding for them. He's, he's been their main man and um, he's, he's, he's got them a lot of points over the last couple of seasons with, with his goals and he's started to affect games as well. So there's no doubt from the club's point of view they won't want to lose him. But like I say, I, I think the player... The player himself, he, he deserves that opportunity. Steve, are you surprised that another Premier League club hasn't come in for Will from Zaha? Yes, I think they, uh, I think they will be. I think you know, first of all, first of all, I, I I just don't see Palace letting him go. If Palace let him go, then they want to get relegated because you look at the stats and the stats mm. back it all up. When he plays, obviously he gets the points for him and he get, and he puts in the performances. When he doesn't play, 
you know, the stats are there, that it's, it's relegation stats. So if they let him go to replace him um, is, is, one, is one feat. Uh, but again, he's a player that has earned the right to challenge himself again. I think when he went to United, it was too early, yeah, too early, young yeah. for him. He's learnt now, he's grown into himself. He knows when to play in terms of what to do on a pitch, when to release that final ball. So he'll want to, it'll come down to the, the, the personal preference of himself. He wants to test himself with, with the big clubs. But for me, he could, uh, he could get into a top four team in this Premier League, no doubt. All right, let's move on to West Ham then because Manuel Pellegrini wants a quick resolution for this one, the Marco Arnautovic situation at the moment. So we've last heard that they rejected a £35 million offer from Shanghai earlier on this month. Um, it's an unhappy player by the looks of it. What kind of influence does an unhappy player have in a dressing room? Yeah, obviously it's, it's not ideal. It's, it's, it's not something you want in a change room because it, it can influence other players. Um, but ultimately, as long as Marko Arnautovic puts in the performances and carries on scoring goals for the football club, then I'm sure the, the, the players and the fans will ignore it. Um, it's a massive shame if he does leave the Premier League because he's 29, he's, he's, a, he's a talent. And I think if, if I'm looking at players that can break into the top four, top six clubs, there's him and Gilfi Sigurdsson in my eyes, that, that are the two that, that should be playing at a higher level. So. From a personal point of view, if he does leave, then I'll be very disappointed because he's too young for that in, in my eyes. I don't think it's an evaluation nowhere near that meets the player either. Th I mean, 35 million yeah. for Marco and Altovic. I mean, it's just... And then there's the, is there the tax implications as well? I think in China they have to pay 100%, mm -hmm. so it's then 70 million. So, you know, you can see where that goes. But, I mean, I've been fortunate, again, to play with Marco and being in the dressing room with him. And, he can swing both ways when, when things are great, he's, he's, he's great to be around, but if things aren't going so well for him personally as well, he can, he can be a bit of an upset. How key is he for West Ham and how key is it to keep hold of him? Oh, huge. I mean, again, he's gone there and, as, as a wide attacking player. He's ended up being the yeah. focal point up top, scoring goals, bringing others into play. And again, it seems as though he's enjoying himself there. You know, he seems like he's the main man there. He loves, he loves that sort of... He's taken that defensive responsibility away from him, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's given him the freedom to to be selfish and just, just worry about affecting games and, and scoring goals. Whereas on the wing at times, you, you could kind of see him as, as a weak link if he was having a bad day, whereas you flip that, if, if he was on form, then he was unplayable at times. If he does go, what about Maxi Gomez? Is that a replacement? Uh, again, it's, it's very difficult because if he goes, the money that... I mean, if we're talking 35 million, what, what, what does that get you out there? Um, not a lot, really. I mean, you've got to give credit and praise to what West Ham have done, especially the owners, in terms of backing up what they've said with going to the new stadium and then, and then parting with money for, for players. So um, if he does go, they're going to want to get as much money as possible and, and bring in a high level of quality because what he produces is, is goals and assists. OK, moving on to Newcastle. Uh, they have said that left-back is a priority, that position to cover. That's the left-back Jordan Lukaku, Romelu Lukaku's brother, is, will be uh, there on loan now until the end of the season. How big is that a move for Newcastle? And, and, and Newcastle fans uh, have been asking for some sort of signings and asking for help, and that is a key position. Yeah, but I don't think it's the marquee signing that the fans want. Uh, I'm sure Rafa Benitez would have wanted a bigger name and probably another three or four players because he's not been backed. The, the manager, what an incredible job he's done for the football club. He's, he's got them promoted from the championship. He's, he's survived in the Premier League and the club need to back him. They, they need to give him what they want because Rafa Benitez, in, in my eyes, is, is too good a manager for that football club not to be giving him money. So it's a shame. It's, it's, it's a difficult moment Newcastle are in. And, um, I think they need to get another couple over, over the line before the end of this transfer window. They've also said, he said they want a couple of attacking players and they need it, they need to score goals, don't they? Oh, they're desperate for goals. Um, you know, literally just echoing what Ryan's saying there. He's, he's worked miracles on what he's done there with the squad that he's, uh, we've got. And, and that's the remit from Mike Ashley. You know, he's not, gonna, yeah. he's not really going to spend. Uh, if he does, it's going to be very, very little. That's why he's got... That the main man in charge to, to get the best out of all them players. You know, they've got a chance in Rondon up top. I'm a big fan of him. Balls that come into the box, he's a presence. He gets himself on the end of things. If not, he can, uh, he can get on the knockdowns and bring others into play. But the fans deserve better up there. I mean, Newcastle, when, when that place is rocking, there's no better, there's no better stadium in, in the country. 
that relationship between Mike Ashley and, and Rafa Benitez, how long do you think it can go on with, with Rafa not being supported? Again, that would be down to personal preference with, um, with Rafa. You know, it, there's a lot that's been said about the financial gains of, of him staying up and seeing out the contract and, uh, and loyalty bonuses. So that, that could be a factor. At the end of the day, again, he's another one that's going to come out of it with his head held high because how he's dealt with it has been superb. But he would have known the restraints and the restrictions when he took over the job. But, you know, you, you just got to feel sorry for the fans because they go there, you know, to home and away. They, they go in numbers and they're just desperate for good football to be played there. They're 19th at the moment in, in, in terms of, um, sorry, they're 17th at the moment and just two points above the relegation zone or the drop zone. They're ranked 19th in the Deloitte money list though. So that's come out. Do fans have a right to be angry when you, when you see those kind of figures? Oh, 100%. I mean, the magnitude of the club, they, they fill that stadium. Their, their fans are absolutely fantastic. And like I said, they've got a manager there that if you did back him, then you would kind of trust the fact that he would be a success there. I mean, the, the job he's done is incredible as it is and he hasn't been backed financially. So he's earned that money. He, he's earned the, the freedom to, to go and pick a few players. And I'm sure if the board don't give him that, then ultimately I, I don't think he'll be, he'll be there much longer because if Rafa Benitez does leave Newcastle, there, there's going to be a few big clubs sniffing around. OK, let's move on to the news about Thierry Henry then, because we heard this earlier on. Monaco have suspended him from his duties as first-team coach until they make a final decision on his future. Um, we can have a look at his stats. So since he was appointed uh, head coach at Monaco, things haven't really gone to plan at all. Um, he's played 20 games in all competitions. He's only won five. One of those includes a, a win on penalties. He's drawn four and he's lost 11. His win rate is 25%. It's not worked out. It hasn't worked out so far. We're just in a period of change, though, at Monaco. He's signed a number of players, one of those being Cesc Fabregas. Do you think this is the right time to, to suspend and potentially to let Thierry Henry go? Or do you think maybe he should have been given a bit more time to implement the changes? This is the modern-day management scenario, isn't it? You know, it's, if things aren't going well, you've got no time. Um, what, what really worries me is that if they do part company what then goes on for, for, on, for Thierry uh, for after, because that could really damage his managerial reputation. You know, you don't get too many chances in, in, the, in the managerial front. He would have known the situation, what the club was in, obviously, when he took over the league. I think the affiliation with the club from, from obviously his playing days has probably uh, swayed his decision, with obviously with the, with the chance of obviously going to Aston Villa as well. So uh, he would have known what he was getting himself into. It's not obviously gone to plan, it's not gone as, as well as he would have liked, but that is the modern, the modern day now. And if they see it fit to, to get rid of him now and they've got a chance of getting out of, the, uh, out of that relegation, then that's what they'll do. Steve, you mentioned the championship and that link that he had to Aston Villa. Yeah. Would that have been a, a role that would have suited him had he decided to, to go to the championship? No, not for me. I mean, he's... he's Don't mince your words, Ryan. <laughs> no, he, he's not a player that's... that's experienced the championship. I mean, I think the Monaco job for him was, was far too soon and, and too big for him. I mean, we, we, we talk about Ligue 1 Solskjaer, he's, he's earned his stripes and he's gone into that job, arguably the biggest club in the world, top two, top three, and he's comfortable doing it. Whereas you look at Henri and he's gone into to, to Monaco and I mean, the results ain't great. It's, it's been very difficult to him to implement his style and get results quickly and ultimately it's a results driven business and it's, yeah. it's, it's, not been, it's not been good enough for you him. You say that but you've got to say, you've got to always end up and everyone's got to start somewhere. You know, you say it was the wrong decision to, you know, to, to possibly not go to Aston Villa or if you went to Aston Villa it was still the wrong decision. Frank Lampard's gone in at Derby, done a fantastic job, no Even experience, well, zero experience, you know. I know you could say the same yeah. level of, <clears throat> of, of playing career as, as Thierry. Stevie G obviously at Rangers, huge pressure up there. They've got to start somewhere. They obviously pick and choose their clubs that they see as fit with working with the hierarchy as well as um, finances that's offered to them and as well as the players in their playing squad. Are they, are they good enough uh, to match their own ambition? So all these young managers, aspiring managers now, they've got to start somewhere and he obviously he chose Monaco as the right place to be and it's, it's obviously not working out. Yeah, I mean, when, when I think of Lampard and Gerrard, I mean, Gerrard, under-18 coach at Liverpool, he, he had a season of, of taking a team. There, there's a lot that you have to deal with. It's, it's not just the case of training and match days. There, there's so much behind the scenes that, that goes on as well. And he prepared himself, Lampard prepared himself. So they've gone into their clubs and 
they, they have a rough idea of what's going on from a day-to-day -day basis. They, they have to deal with different scenarios. You have to speak to people up top, the, the board, you've always got someone above you. And I just think that, that job for Henri, I mean, I know he had, he had a little bit of, bit of work with Belgium, the national side, but that was nothing compared to what he's gone into at Monaco. And Monaco's a huge club. It's, it, it's a massive football club. And the situation that he went in as well, where they were in the league, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a difficult moment for him. How difficult is it? You're, you're both used to working with, with youngsters now. But how difficult is it for players, for example, like Thierry Henry, to go into clubs and, and to try and manage for the first time or try and coach players that potentially are a different level to what he was? Yeah, and... You know, a, a good person to, to speak to about that is Paul Merson when he took over uh, yeah, his time at Walsall. That's, that was the biggest thing that, that he, he couldn't just fathom. And obviously that was quite a while ago. Um, the game's evolved now. And again, it's all about communication and, and your skill set. The, the, the modern day player uh, is all about massaging egos and getting the best out of them. Um, and that, and that, is, that is what you need to do as a manager. You know, it's irrelevant of what you've done in the past. Mm. Look at Roy Keane, for instance, you know, you know a, a great uh, servant to the Premier League and what he's done and what he's uh, achieved in his career. I think at times that he, he, he didn't, the, the teams that he was managing and the players weren't up to his standard and it sometimes can, can go against you. What next, just quickly, do you think for, for Thierry Henry? Well, there's no doubt that it's, it's damaged his reputation as a manager. I mean, maybe from his point of view, go, go somewhere and just get experience on, on the training pitch and, and do the hours because that job was huge for him. W without much experience as a coach and as a manager, it was, it was a big one for him. All right, boys, thank you very much. Now, just a quick one before we go. There's loads more to uh, see on Sky Sports over the course of the next couple of days, including the debate, which is back tomorrow with Andy Cole and also Ray Pilots at 10 o'clock on the Sky Sports Premier League channel. And then tomorrow, Football Centre is on at 10 a.m. on Sky Sports News with interviews from Pep Guardiola much uh, uh, Maurizio Pochettino and also Rafa Benitez. And that is it from us. Thank you to both of our guests this evening. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again next time. Sky Sports Premier League. Feel it all.